Have you tried getting Amazon Bedrock working with a Lambda function? Well, in this video, that's exactly what we're going to take a look at. Let's jump into the AWS console and take a look. Here I have Amazon Bedrock. Just a quick recap here. Um, I've got my models enabled currently in this, in this account. So if I scroll down, go to model access, you'll see that in this particular region, I've got access to a whole ton of different models. If you're wondering how all of this works and why all of this works and how to use the console a little bit more uh, in detail, then there's a link up in the corner somewhere up there, which will go to a video where I walk through all of that. Now let's jump into the uh, Lambda console itself. So here I've got a Lambda function which I've already created. So it's a Python 3.11 function. Um, it's called my bedrock function because no imagination. Okay, let's scroll down um, and you can see the code here. So I'm importing Boto3, I'm using the bedrock runtime um, object from the bedrock client rather, um, and then following the bouncing ball here. So this is the almost boilerplate code. I've got this very simple prompt, uh, write a fictional article about, sorry, write an article about a fictional planet Fubar. Um, I'm then inserting that into these keyword arguments. These arguments I actually grabbed straight out of the console, so definitely using that as part of my um, development process. Then get a response back from the Amazon Bedrock uh, client uh, by sending all of those keyword arguments in, and we get the response back out. Okay, so brilliant. Um, is that what this video is about? Not quite. Let me show you now. I'm going to click test, and we're going to see what comes back from this um, request when we run this model. And we get this response coming back saying, unknown service. Bedrock runtime. So basically, Boto3 doesn't know about the Bedrock runtime. What's happening there? I mean, Bedrock's in my account, the models are enabled, why can't I get access to it? And the reason is because the SDK version that I'm using, so Boto3 SDK version, was released prior to Amazon Bedrock. So it doesn't know about Amazon Bedrock. It doesn't know how to work with it. And this is the default, currently, the default SDK which is available inside of the Lambda environment. So we need to update the version of Boto3 that this code has access to. Now there's a couple of different ways of doing that. If you deploy Lambda functions with build pipeline processes such as the SAM framework, then inside of there, just go into your requirements.txt, type in Boto3, so make sure that it's pulling in the latest version of Boto3 every time it's zipping up your Lambda function and pushing it out. But what about in this scenario here? I'm experimenting and I've just got some code that I'm working with inside of the console. Well, I can use a Lambda layer. So a Lambda layer is a zip function that we can provide to the Lambda environment. And we can say to any function that we have, when you run, make sure that you're pulling the libraries in the first instance out of this zip file. So let's go ahead and create a Lambda layer with the latest version of Boto3 and get this Lambda function working. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to load the Cloud Shell. So if I just click this button here, right in the middle, well, with my zoom level anyway, right in the middle at the top of the console page. So here is a command line environment right here inside of my AWS console. So everything I'm doing here is in the cloud. It's not actually happening on my local machine. And I can use this environment to create a Lambda layer and upload it. There are lots of ways you can do this, but this is one of the ways that you can do it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to install the latest version of Boto3 into a folder, then I'm going to zip it up and make that my Lambda layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a directory and I'm going to call this uh, bedrock layer because no imagination. Okay, so let's make that and let's then um, change directory into that folder. So we've just got somewhere clean to work. And then inside of there, I'm going to make a folder um, or a directory called Python. And it's very important that this is actually called Python. The other folder, not so much of a problem. You can call that anything you like. This one needs to be called Python um, because this is where we're going to install Boto3 into and it's the path that the Lambda layer will be looking for. So if I just do a quick directory listing, here is my empty folder called Python. Now I'm going to use the pip package manager to install Boto3 into here. And I do that like this. I type in pip, um, and I'm going to use pip3 for Python3. 
Um, I'm then going to ask it to um, install um, hyphen T for target. So I want to put it into this folder. So I'm going to say into the Python folder. And what do I want to install in there? I want to install Boto3. So this is going to get pip to specifically install the latest version of Boto3 into that Python folder there. So hit enter on that and off it goes. And it should just rattle through all of those files. Now we can have a look to make sure it's done that in just a second when it's finished. And it should be finished now-ish. There we go. Okay, so let's, um, again, so we've got our Python folder there. And if we do a directory listing um, inside of that Python folder, there it is. There's all of the Boto3 li uh, library files that we want to zip up. Okay, so again, we are in that one step down. We're looking, we're in the same folder as that Python folder. What we now need to do is zip everything up that we can use that then as the Lambda layer. And zip is installed inside of this environment. So I can say zip um, hyphen R, and then I'm going to call this uh, bedrock layer dot zip. So obviously that's the file name that I'm looking to create. And then I press period because I want to zip everything that's in this current location. So that should make my zip file. And you can see it adding in all of those files there. Again, all of this happening up in the cloud. None of this is happening on my machine. So if I do a directory listing now, then I can see that bedrock layer.zip file right there. Now, I need to upload that as a Lambda layer. Now, I could just download this, go to the console page for Lambda, upload it from there, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it again right here in the command line. So I'm going to use the AWS CLI for this, so the AWS command line tool. So I'm going to call AWS. I'm going to call AWS Lambda because I'm using Lambda features here. And then I'm going to say publish layer version. And then I'm going to make sure I've spelled it right. Uh, well, I haven't <laughs> version. Okay, AWS Lambda publish layer version. Then I need to give a layer name. And that layer name for me, I will we'll just call bedrock layer because that seems like a good idea. Um, and then I need to show it the file that I want to upload. And so the file is going to be uh, done like this. So zip, uh, hyphen hyphen zip um, file, because it's a zip file that we have. Um, and then I have file b colon forward slash forward slash, a binary file I'm pointing it to. And it's the binary file we just made. So let me make sure I've got all of that right. Um, so file B, bedrock layer zip, that looks correct. Let's press enter on that. And then again, in the cloud environment, it's going to take that um, zip file and upload it as a layer, which it's done. And it's given me this large response back. All right, let's go and see this inside of the console. So let's uh, close this shell for the moment. I'm going to scroll up here and go to my menu, um, my Lambda menu. I'm going to go to Layers. And inside of here, if I press Refresh, I, I have it indeed. I've got my Bedrock layer here. Now, this is version 2 because I have created one of these in the past. But everything that I did basically just uploaded this Lambda layer. If I click in on that, um, I can see details about it, and I can also see here the ARN, so the resource name for this particular layer that we've created. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to go back to my Lambda function. Um, so there's my bedrock function. And here you'll see right at the top here this layers with a zero here. So it's basically showing us that we're not using any Lambda layers at the moment. So let's go ahead and click Layers. It takes us to this Layers box. I can say Add a Layer. I'm going to add the layer directly from the ARN. So paste that into there and click Add. It whirs around for just a moment and it should take us back in a second once it's done that. And now we've got a one inside of that bracket there. So it's got a Lambda layer. If I now scroll down and click the Test button, well, let's get rid of that and let's get rid of that. Right, now if I click the Test button, then when it comes back this time, Hopefully everything's been successful. Now, whilst we're doing this and we're waiting for this generation, you'll notice that this particular generation is taking a little while because I've asked it to create an entire 
um, article. So one of the things I also had to do with this Lambda function is change the execution time up from the default three seconds to something else. I actually gave it, I think, three minutes. And the other thing I had to do was make sure that it's got IAM permissions to talk to the Bedrock service. So you can see now that one, with those things set and also with the up-to-date version of the Boto3 library there as well, here is our generation that has come out of that, uh, that model. So here's the draft article about a fictional planet called FUBAR. Okay, hopefully that was useful and that answered some of the questions that you have about getting started with Amazon Bedrock. Whilst you're looking for more information about generative AI and about Bedrock and about all things AWS, they'll please do subscribe to this channel. Um, add more questions below here if you've got them and I'll see what I can do my absolute best to answer those for you. And um, also take a look at community.aws. So here in community.aws uh, forward slash generative AI, it's available just as a menu option. This is a place that we've got where we're compiling together articles about generative AI. So not just about Bedrock, not just about SageMaker Jumpstart, um, but about generative AI, the core technology, how it works and how you can get the best out of it when you're building applications using this amazing new set of technology that we have available to us. So please do leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it ask me questions in the comments, and until the next time, I will see you in the next video.